Romance is hard. It can take a lot of time, energy, and most fear-inducing, the necessity to be vulnerable. And even after you take that great risk and open yourself up to somebody else, there isn't a guarantee you're going to get anything satisfying out of it. To even attempt such a bond is difficult when the individuals involved are not the most mentally sound, or more strenuous when both parties are unable to communicate their feelings straightforwardly. Neon Genesis Evangelion explores this dilemma through the pairings we see tackle the tribulations of feeling mutual attraction. Asuka Langley Soryu is a confident, ambitious, and talented teenager. She's a skillful pilot, a child prodigy, and a much-needed social member of the team. However, her potential is wholly shadowed by her immaturity. She's neurotic, selfish, super confrontational, and very easily made jealous. Even though she makes attempts to connect with people, her personality makes this next to impossible. Asuka is extremely obnoxious. So much so that despite all the attention she initially garners at the middle school Shinji and Rei attend, she is reduced to the perception of either an arrogant brat or an exotic sex object. When Shinji asks Asuka why she pilots the Evangelion, she lukewarm agrees with his response that she pilots to prove that she exists. In other words, Asuka pilots because she doesn't feel like she has anything to offer somebody else to garner their affection. Asuka doesn't think that people can genuinely like her, that people have the ability to authentically care about her without any strings attached. This in turn leads to Asuka basing her entire self-worth off of her perception as an Ava pilot, which becomes a problem for her later in the series. Because of this, Asuka struggles in her relationship with Shinji. He shows signs over and over again of being someone worth her romantic affection, but his general social ineptitude and his apathetic attitude towards life prevent him from servicing her emotional needs. And because she doesn't want to confront her emotions, compound with her briefly mentioned personal traumas, adding to the fact she is 14, Asuka is unable to communicate her feelings in a straightforward way, leading to the aggressive kiss scene late in the episode. Likewise, Shinji doesn't have a good grasp on his communication skills either. He understands basic manners and customs, but when it comes to actually interacting with people, he is still a novice. Shinji doesn't realize how strange his sensitivity is or how protective he is of the people he cares about. This inexperience allows Shinji to be more genuine than most of the characters in the show. That is not to downplay the fact that Shinji wants to be with Asuka. She's smart, she's attractive, and she gives him attention. But Asuka's mixed signals coupled with his low self-esteem make it difficult for him to have a concrete impression of her. The irony in all this being, the unintended authenticity Shinji exhibits is one of the things that Asuka is drawn to. But the same trait is also what prevents the relationship both parties want from coming into fruition. If Shinji wasn't as naive and reciprocated the kiss, we would have seen the sincere romantic moment Asuka wanted. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, torpedoing any potential relationship at least for now. Paralleling the kids, Kaji and Misato are running into their own difficulties in defining what they want from each other. Kaji cares about Misato, but he believes as though he hasn't matured enough to have a proper relationship. This immaturity has been exemplified the last few episodes where Kaji purposefully flirts with other women and kisses Misato against her verbal wishes. Kaji goes about relationships how a high schooler thinks James Bond should react to certain situations. Misato, on the other hand, is terrified of Kaji because of her Electra complex, meaning Misato is still unsure whether she authentically loves Kaji or not. Everything leads to Misato thinking she is a terrible person who doesn't deserve the affection of other people. Her ambivalence is represented perfectly when after Kaji kisses her, she can't even bring herself to embrace him. Misato has a severe difficulty handling romantic feelings when she already has an extremely complicated relationship with someone she is supposed to love, but in reality, she despises. The lavender Asuka smells on Kaji carries a heavy symbolic weight, not only to the audience, but to Asuka. Asuka realizes, despite her very obvious advances, that Kaji loves Misato and will never reciprocate her feelings of attraction, further bruising her ego after the awkward kiss with Shinji. All of these depressing revelations, followed by the eerie scenes of Rei in a tank and Misato discovering the white body below Nerve, signify tonally of the many grim things to come. Evangelion's portrayal of romance is something that has always fascinated me. The show presents us with broken characters desperately trying to connect with varying degrees of success. And these attempts are messy and inconclusive. They aren't some ideal for people to aspire to. In this way, the relationships in Eva are far more honest and realistic. Romance in real life is never as cut and dry or easy to understand as the media would like one to believe. 
Sometimes people who shouldn't be together end up as a couple and those who would benefit from being in an intimate relationship are unable to connect cohesively enough to make it happen. Evangelion presents this dilemma and in doing so has allowed me to reflect on what I want. I want a relationship in which my partner and I can be honest with each other. I want something where despite our potential past traumas, it doesn't disconnect us. But to guarantee things like this is impossible and one may not be able to. But that is what makes romance hard. And to question things like this is what makes watching Evangelion a prolific experience for me. Do you relate with the difficulties found by Asuka and Misato, or has romance always been easy for you? Let me know in the comments below and share if you found what I said even a little interesting. If you wish to support content like this, then be sure to pledge to my Patreon for this series will be finished one day, and be sure to subscribe to hopefully see when new stuff comes out, for there will be more than just Ava content. Thank you for watching, and take care.